Uh, this is a history of FHA's claim rates going back to 1975. So I call 10% the norm for FHA. So, you know, if you're looking at this research which says it's based on 9 and 10 and there's a 10% foreclosure rate, the result that you get in terms of financing failure in these working class neighborhoods, I believe, is representative, completely representative of what FHA is doing today and likely what FHA has been doing over many years. FHA should return to its traditional mission, um, and I describe how that's done, including uh, shorter loan terms, some limits on uh, uh, maximum debt to income, uh, and uh, if FHA doesn't want to price for risk, which Congress doesn't want it to do, it could at least underwrite for risk. And underwriting for risk gets back to this fundamental question, what is uh, an acceptable failure rate? Uh, seller concessions is a perfect example of how FHA uses its policies that benefit a particular interest group, in this case home builders and realtors, mostly home builders, and hurts the mission that it's supposed to be helping, which is low and moderate income borrowers in working class neighborhoods. The problem is the average FHA loan is $180,000, and the lowest loan size that FHA provides data on is below $180,000. doesn't have data in its proposed rule beyond that or below that. 33% of the loans below 180 have a seller concession of greater than 3%, nearly 50% are greater than 4 where the concession is greater than three, defaults are 1.9 times greater than where it's zero, and a third of FHA's loans are zero. Um, where it's greater than three, it's 1.3 times the rate for loans between zero, greater than zero, and less than or equal to 3%. This is another example of FHA's underwriting standards setting up working class families and communities for failure. It's putting the people most at risk, it's giving them the riskiest loan, and they Lender con uh, seller concessions are just another variant of that.